Hello, good morning. I'm Stacy. You might also know me as the geriatric gymnast. No, I'm not 80 years old, but sometimes it feels that way. I am obviously not in Flippers Gymnastics. Uh, I haven't been there now. It's three weeks and I'm, I'm having um, all sorts of, you know, feelings about that. But I am on week three of the boot. So if you didn't know, I mean, I've posted enough about it already, but I broke my fifth metatarsal on the right side three weeks ago doing a round off back tuck on the tumble track, which is a surface that has been a real challenge for me. Uh, I've been trying to get more skills back on it in the last, you know, couple of weeks. This summer I was rehabbing a shoulder. I had a shoulder impingement. So I had all sorts of hangups and issues regarding especially the tumble track because it's such a harder surface than the trampoline which is really easy for me to flip on and the tumble track is definitely not easy for me to flip on so i started to get some courage and i was going back into you know round off prep and then round off jumping round off straddle back tuck i finally got a couple of round off back tucks i made the connection and then the third or the third time that I actually did connect it uh, I was landing on a you know a mat like an eight inch mat and I threw it because I was like you can get around just just go but then I think my my foot position was in a bad place and then like it the ankle inverted I know it's like you do this every time every time I explain it every people do this and uh, I landed on it on the mat and I felt the snap heard you know heard it and I knew, okay, this was this was not good. You know, I couldn't walk on it. And then the x-ray showed it was a break in the fifth metatarsal down, you know, by the base. So the good news is that I didn't need surgery. It was aligned. You know, the bone was aligned. Uh, and the, so it was just like a six to eight week process of healing it in the boot. It's been a real challenge. I, I do not like being in the boot. I can't drive. So that makes, I went back to work uh, last week. And that's a challenge, you know, I've had to make some serious, serious modifications. Obviously, I'm not going to be jumping on it anytime soon. That's going to be several months before I'm actually jumping on it. My hope is about three weeks, I'll be able to get the boot off and start, you know, walking normally. I'm doing heel walking now. You know, I was using crutches for a couple days. First week, I was not behaving as well as I should have. I thought I was doing more healing activities and I was actually you know, harming it more live and learn. Now I've been like to a T being really, really careful. And one of the challenges is how do you get movement in when you are in a boot? You can't, you know, bear weight on it. I could put a little weight in the heel, but I have to really limit that. That's like not advised, but I can't go six weeks without doing anything. So I did a little uh, research, a um, little YouTube research, and I found some good ideas. You know, you can still work the rest of your body and be very mindful of the weight and stress that you're putting on the broken foot. I'm home now, obviously. And so I have my yoga mat all set up. I've got like some uh, stretchy band, the TheraBand. I've got, these are some one pound, I found these, I had these from years ago. These are like one pound weights. Um, I've got, these are my three pound ankle weights, which I'm obviously not gonna use on my ankle. These are some six, six pounders, right? So if I wanna start doing a little more shoulder work, uh, I can do that. But most of it is just body weight. And uh, believe me, uh, I feel it. So I'm gonna sort of show you some of the stuff that I've been doing, doing my workout. So if you are of the broken foot set, <laughs> if you're in the boot, obviously you have to check with your doctor and make sure that you're okay to do it. Oh, and I also had gotten, because I was really worried about my hips and my back, cause I've already got back issues, but I did get this really cool addition to put on my shoe. It's called Even Up. I found it on Amazon. So you can you know look that up if if you are in this situation and there's a couple of different levels like foam levels that you can decide because the boot is really thick and it, it makes your hips really uneven so um this kind of you add on to your regular sneaker and then it, it acts as a lift 
and that way when you're you know in a standing position your hips are you know closer to level i don't think they'll be actually perfect but and also i think you know our legs aren't quite always even but it has helped and aside from all the sitting that i've been doing uh you know keeping my foot up and icing it uh it, it's really helped with the the walking and keeping my walking nice and level so anyway i thought i'd share some of my uh, workout stuff so here we go enjoy okay so you know the rules are can't put weight on the foot so i can't you know point my foot and put weight on the ankle i have to kind of keep things elevated uh, best that i can and as long as there's not undue pressure that takes the foot or the ankle out of place you know we're, we're good so i have to do some shoulder work i'm going to be doing some hip work uh, working on hamstrings and quadriceps uh, so here we go push-ups will always be hard. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of push-ups they are. They will always be hard. So, I want to do some, um, what do you call these? Rows. And this is my silver TheraBand. Uh, it's the strongest one that I have. So this was actually something I did in physical therapy for my shoulder. And I just think it's a, you know, now really good warm-up. So here we go. I'm working on some shoulder mobility. My shoulders have always been tight, not fun. These bird dogs are like great for core strength um, and they also feel really good. There are some like core where you're like slogging along, but these are sort of constant. They keep that that abdominal wall like pressed down and tight and it's all about mobility so I really really like these. So sometimes those roll-ups are a little tricky because the boot gets stuck on the mat. So, but in all of this, I'm not putting any like significant weight. It's just my foot on the floor. So like, if you think about it, I'm, when I sleep, I probably put more weight on the foot and I don't have the boot on then. So I'm really being mindful and careful about, you know, what kind of pressure that I'm putting on this thing. Because Lord knows after my first week appointment. <laughs> it was just so devastating. I blogged about it. I'll put a link in the blog to the blog. Um, and you can read, I think there's five parts now and you'll be able to read more if you really want. Okay. Something for hip flexors and quadriceps. I tend to actually cross my <laughs> arms in front just so I can be mindful of how tall I'm sitting. And so this is going to just work all of this whole area here. Now, for purposes of the video, I'm only doing 10 repetitions. Normally I'll do 20, but you know, it would take forever to get through and that's not that exciting. I'm just trying to show a variety of the kinds of things that I do. It's not everything that I do, but it's a lot. So you are you might be wondering, oh, is the boot heavy? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly heavier than the sneaker, but you know, keep in mind, like my right calf is like gone. <laughs> you know, I've got like a really nice, like nice size, left calf, my right calf is just like gone in three weeks, you know, use it or lose it. So that's something I'm going to have to build up once I'm able to start walking and start, you know, bearing weight. Uh, so I just kind of have to let that one go. 
<laughs> and try and work, you know, all the other stuff. So now I'm going to go back into my tabletop position and start working some of the back body. Um, this next stuff is for shoulders, but also back. So I'm sort of combining a couple things that I learned in PT and some stuff that I kind of picked up along the way. So I have both the one pound weights, one for each hand, and the three pound weights, one in each hand. And I'll decide, you know, how I want to use them depending on how things feel. So I'm going to start with the threes now here. Okay. I'm gonna go to the one pounders for the lateral and the above the head stuff. do something that I found on uh, a guy named Ken Stretch with Beard. He's on all the social media. He's got a YouTube channel. And I thought that this was really great for the shoulder mobility. So now I'm going to do it. push-ups. Trying to work the knee glutes, glute needs. These little um, clamshells, these are actually pretty good. And I'm literally just pivoting on the heel. I'm not putting any weight on it. I don't feel any pressure. This just adds a little more oomph to it. And actually my lower foot helps to support the boot. <laughs> so now there is no weight. In fact, I'm kind of hovering my foot up a little bit. Well, you can't, it's in the boot. <laughs> you can't see it right now. But a little extra oomph. I'm trying to get the a little bit more into that glute. I've also been working on internal rotation in the hip. This is for external rotation, but I've been doing some stuff for the, I lost count, for internal rotation as well. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you know, stretching is a little bit of a challenge because, you know, I don't want to put too much weight anywhere there. So this is just gonna be gentle and I do the best I can. I'm always doing the best that I can. See here, I can go further down because it's putting weight on the outside of the foot that I really can't do on that side. So this will just get a better stretch. It's just the way it is. I think the last thing I'm gonna do for today because I really haven't been doing bench press or fly kind of stuff. So I decided I'd try my six pound barbells, just do a little bit of upper body, you know, chest, that kind of stuff. Uh, just so, you know, this doesn't go away.
okay, I didn't feel so bad. It was actually the first time I was doing any kind of sets like that with anything heavier than the one or the three. So I guess I've been doing something right. That goes to show that there are things that you can do uh, as long as you check in with your doctor and make sure, you know, it's doctor approved. But you can still work out even if you've got the boot on. Um, there's a lot of adjustments you'll have to do. You have to be really mindful. You know, you're not going to be able to do what you normally do. But since you're spending so much time as a couch potato, <laughs> sometimes it's nice to get up, shake off the cobwebs, get some mobility in, you know, move the rest of your body because you'll, you'll find, you know, so if you're using crutches, um, you know, or the, the weird hobble walk that you wind up doing to make sure you don't do anything worse, it takes a toll on the rest of the body. And it also takes a toll on your mental health. You know, it's it's really depressing when you're as active as, as I am and all of a sudden you have something that just puts the kibosh on so much of the stuff that you're used to doing. This helps to mitigate that. If I'm starting to feel really low, I can just pull out the mat, pull out some of the weights and just move. You know, the endorphins that get released, you know, science has proven that exercise helps your mood. So if I can help my mood while I'm helping my body, I'm going to do that. That's it for today. If you like the video, let me know, make some comments, ask me some questions. I'm happy to answer to the best of my ability. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a PT. I'm just like a gal who's active, who really is trying to stay active while she is healing. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff, share it, let people know, especially people who are in their 50s, like me, we've got a lot to do and we've got a lot to grow. Thanks for watching and take care.